first toolpath we're going to add is just going to face the top of the part off. So I'll click face, select my library, and grab a face mill from my library. Remember, facing automatically knows where the top of the stock is and the top of the model is, so I simply need to click OK, and the facing toolpath is generated. Now the next toolpath we're going to create is a facing operation on this side angled face. If we weren't using a multi-axis setup, we'd have to reposition the part in the machine, so that would require a new job. However, because we're doing multi-axis programming, we're simply going to click Face again. We're using the same tool, so we can move directly to the Geometry tab. Now, this is where we start to get to the multi-axis positioning. Simply click Tool Orientation, and now we're going to select the face that we want to be machining perpendicular to. So I'll select that face, and we can see we've repositioned the direction of Z. I'm going to move to Stock Contours, and set it to just machine that face, so that we're not machining the entire volume of the stock. Additionally, by default facing is running along the X axis, so I know that I want to change that to machine at 90 degrees. Our arrow is updated to machining along the long edge of the part, so we'll click OK, and we have a facing operation that's rotated the part around and faced that flat edge. We have a similar edge on the other side of the part, so we could recreate the facing operation or simply mirror it over. With face still selected, I'll select Pattern and choose Mirror. I'm going to expand my feature tree and simply select the plane that slices through the middle of the part. In our preview, we can see the toolpath mirrored over, so I'll click OK. And we've now machined both of those faces. Again, very quick, very simple. We'll notice that the mirror folder is still bold. This is helpful if we want to continue adding toolpaths that are mirrored around that same face. But we don't, because the next thing we're going to do is machine around the outside of the part so I'll go ahead and make the entire job my default folder. To machine around the outside of the part, I'm going to start by roughing it. So from 2D milling, I'll select Adaptive Clearing and select my library. I'm going to go find a quarter inch tool to rough the part with from my aluminum library. With the tool found, I'll press Select and move on to the Geometry tab. Now, by default, HSMWorks remembers the orientation of your last toolpath and uses that, but we don't need to have any custom orientation on this particular operation, so I'll turn tool orientation back off. Now, all I need to do is select the outside contour of the part to define what we're machining, and because we're machining everything on the outside of this chain, I'll turn off machine cavities. I can move over to the Heights tab, and I want to machine past that bottom chain to ensure that I don't have any flash when I flip this part over and face it off. So I'm going to use an offset value of negative 50 thousandths of an inch. We'll click OK, and we've roughed the outside of the part. I now want to run a finishing pass around the part. So I could start a new contour, but a nice trick in HSM works is to use a derived operation so that we can use the same tool and same geometry for a new operation type. So let's just right click, select Create Derived Operation, 2D Milling, and Contour. The only thing we need to do is move to the Passes tab and turn off the stock to leave that was left on from the roughing pass. I'll click OK, and I have a finished pass around the outside of the part. And now we're ready to drill our holes. Let's go ahead and select Drilling and Drill. I'm going to pick my library and go find a spot drill. I have a nice 5 16 inch spot drill here, so let's use that and move to the Geometry tab. We need to reorientate the machine to run these holes, so I'll turn on Tool Orientation. And now I don't have a flat face to select when I'm picking that hole. But the nice thing is, we can use a cylindrical or conical face to define the orientation of the Z-axis as well. So let's just go ahead and select that cylindrical face of the hole, and we can see the coordinate system down here is updated to have Z 
running along the axis of that hole. Now you need to be careful though when you select a cylindrical face because Z may be pointed in the wrong direction. If it is, just go ahead and click Reverse Z. Bear in mind, we don't need to worry about where X and Y are. HSMWorks is going to take care of that for us. So we've got Z pointing in the right direction. Now we need to just pick the hole that we're going to spot. Again, another nice feature with HSMWorks when we're spotting is all we need to do is select the conical face and it automatically calculates how deep that tool needs to go to produce that conic using the tip of the tool. So we've added our spotted hole. Let's click OK. And that's created in the multi-axis position. Next, we need to drill the hole. So I'll select drilling again and drill. Again, we're orientated in the same angle, but we do need to pick our drill. So I'll go to my library and go find a tool. This is going to be a 3 16 drill, so I'll select that from my library, move to the geometry tab, and just define the cylindrical face that is my drill. Here's an example of noting that the hole is coming in from the wrong side, so I'll use reverse Z to have it coming in from the correct side and move to my Heights tab so that we can drill beyond the bottom of the hole just to make sure everything cleans up okay. So I'll select Drill Tip Through Bottom and use a bottom offset value of 20 thousandths of an inch. Let's click OK. And we've now drilled and spotted the hole. I'm going to Control Select both of the holes and again do a pattern to pattern it to the other instances of this same hole on the part. Let's click Pattern. Use a duplication pattern and then we can select the seed component. That is the example that we're going to be copying. So I'll select the bore of that seed component and then I can select the bore of the other components we want to pattern to. So very quickly we've patterned a series of toolpaths to other spots on the model. For the operation order, we're defining how we're going to order the individual operations. I'm going to order it by tool. We spot each of the four holes and then we'll come back and drill each of the four holes. It minimizes the number of tool changes and ultimately has the part run in less time. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we have all four of those holes spotted and drilled. Finally, we're going to rough and finish the inside of the model. That's not going to be patterned with the same pattern, so I'll make my job the default again. And I'm going to actually just duplicate the rough and finishing operations I used on the outside of the model to reuse them on the inside. I've control selected both of them. I'll right click and select duplicate. So I have my two new operations. I want them below this folder so I'm just going to drag the folder above. The other way we can reorder toolpaths within the feature tree is just hold Alt and use the arrow keys. So we've reordered those two duplicated operations to the bottom of the feature tree. Now all we need to do is reselect the geometry. I'll right click the adaptive clearing and edit it. Jump directly to the geometry tab. Clear out the current geometry selections and select the inside edge of that hole. This time we do want to be machining on the inside of the chain we've selected, so we'll turn on machine cavities and click OK. It's time for another little trick. If we're going to have another operation with the exact same geometry selections, all we need to do is hold shift down over top of the operation and drag it on top of the 2D contour. We'll get a nice little prompt that asks us if we want to copy all of the compatible geometry, and we can say yes. So we very quickly roughed the part and ran our finishing contour around the inside. I'd say the only thing left we need to do is simulate the toolpath. 